Good morning on Fellowship Day 163. There's lots that I could say today, but coming into work this morning, there was several related. And without being overly dramatic, several urgently related things that had to be dealt with. One is that... Um, you know, at, at the time of this recording, we are towards late 2021. There is uh, increasing whispers and threats of more um, COVID-19 cases, uh, resurgence in the the darker days of the pandemic. Um, and therefore, from the university side, a new and understandable mandate to make masks compulsory uh, absolutely everywhere, indoors, distance, or otherwise. Um, so there was that uh, in relation and getting our lab, our chemistry lab, fully set up with new fellowship equipment over these first six months or so in the fellowship. There's been an ongoing uh, onus to clear out some really quite arcane, ancient, derelict equipment that is both useless and now unsafe. And the latest on that list today, which is the the main thing I'm focused on, is thanks to one of my uh, safety colleagues here, to clear out an old oven that we had in the lab that uh, was there before my time, that turns out um, is lined with asbestos because that was fine to do so whenever that oven was first bought. So we're clearing that out. So we've got yeah, uh, miscellaneous ongoing clear out stuff in the lab. We've got the, the white asbestos oven to deal with today and um, a revision and re-emphasis on the use of masks throughout the building and the labs um, to ensure safety and also to ensure we can actually keep using the labs. But all of that comes under the banner of safety. Now, this is uh, yeah, it's something that uh, forms a large part of a passion project um, and some company work I do outside of university and outside of this fellowship. I've mentioned a little bit of it in passing in reference to my dad on previous recordings. Um, but in general, for all of us and anyone thinking about this sort of line of fellowship work, uh, I'm speaking particularly about chemistry here, but it's no means by no means uh, exclusive to chemistry. And it is the safety of the people in your care and on many a day so far, I've used deliberately that phrase in, care, in your care, in our care, the people in our care. Because team members are people in your care. And to care for them, we have to be able to frame safety in a way that's more than a bureaucratic necessity. This is the way that allows you to protect these people in such a way that they can work in the way that they want to and the work in the way that best motivates them, work in the way that best impassions them and work in the way that allows each and every one of them to return home to the, the broader fullness of their lives in such a way that they can enjoy that even more than they're enjoying the work that they're a part of. They're in your care at work so that, that you can care for them enough to get them home. Yeah. It's not an easy thing to do. However, on the leadership side of all of this, comes an absolute imperative to lead by example. I won't be going anywhere in this building or speaking to anyone face to face without a mask on. 
I'm trying to be the first to go in and handle things with this lab oven. I'm ensuring that I can be on hand when absolutely necessary. No one's doing anything that I I could and should be the first in line to do for safety reasons, to take that responsibility. I've put clear messages out on our project management platform for the team to re-ensure, um, or rather to, to re-emphasize and make personal the message that's come down from the top of the university to make sure that such emails, such messages don't go ignored and are never assumed to be for someone else. They're as much for us as for anyone else. But in safety, leading by example isn't simply all about um, giving this top-down draconian approach to saying you must do this, you must do that. Um, that's not likely to be sustainable. Leading by example is also about the ability to allow others in your team to question your actions, your behaviours, your telltale signs of complacency when it comes to safety. You as the leader will set the tone and question any behaviours of someone or some people in your team who might not be showing the necessary safety discipline. But you leading by example makes it absolutely imperative that that be a two-way means of communication. That is, as much as you question others, they should be able to question you. And that for to be an entirely open conversation around how best to keep people safe, such that Again, everyone can do what they really want to do and get home to those they love, those they care about and all the things they want to do above, above and beyond work. I realise there's probably quite a lot of repetition in what I've just said, but yeah, even though this is entirely unscripted, maybe subconsciously there's good reason for having repeated that. And I hope in your case, whether you're, you know, someone like me working in chemistry or maybe even the physical sciences, you'll understand what I mean about safety. All I'm trying to do here is frame it in such a way that you realise and see that the, the leadership piece is not all about top down. Yes, you lead by example and set that tone, but you let others question you. And you realise that all of this is about you as the leader not being able to tell people what to do, but you are acting up to the privilege that you have to have people in your care working with you. If you're listening to this and you're perhaps not as closely connected to the physical sciences, I'd be quite willing to bet that safety of some sort comes into your line of work or the thing that you're thinking about striving for if you're going for a fellowship like this one. Um, it doesn't necessarily always have to be under the umbrella of physical safety, but it could be and maybe inclusive of mental safety and psychological safety, um, safety of expression. The word safety as a catch-all has multiple different dimensions that I haven't really gone into here. But therein is the consideration for today. And what you're doing as a leader, what is it exactly that is or should be involved in your conversations around workplace safety? How can you best care for the people that you have the privilege to have in your care. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. 
If you like what you're hearing on the podcast, head over to the website where not only will you find the written blog versions of these podcasts, you'll find my leadership blog series, the daily thought series, and information about my book on managing the imposter phenomenon. We also have even more free resources and webinars linked to the YouTube channel. So head on over to dr-mark-read.com. That's dr-mark with a c-read.com.